I am not a dietary expert, so I'm now right. speaking as an uninformed citizen. Are you still eating your all beef diet? Unfortunately, yes. Really, just just beef. Not. Can you have like ketchup no, on it? Nothing. Two years ago, she said, "Dad, you have to try this diet because you have a lot of the same symptoms as me." No, I eat beef and salt and water. That's it, and I never cheat, ever. Not even a little bit.、Uh, disclaimer number two: I am not recommending、right. this to anyone. One thing I've learned in the last two years is that I think I overestimated. There's an obesity epidemic in North America, perhaps throughout the Western world. I think I overestimated the degree to which that was a consequence of a sedentary lifestyle, and overestimated the degree to which a lack of discipline was contributing to it. I think I think much more now that it's an illness. Well, those are two different things, though, aren't they? Discipline is self-control, and illness is something out of your control. Well, let's say you're overweight. You should exercise.、Mm -hmm. It's like well. Actually, the evidence that exercise will thin you down isn't that great, and maybe the reason that you're not exercising is because you're ill, not that you're ill because you're not exercising. So I've, I have a lot more sympathy for the hypothesis that the obesity epidemic is actually a consequence of a, of a, of an illness of a broad scale. Illness isn't exactly right. Mm -hmm. It's a dietary problem fundamentally,、are、and you, there are deep causes for that. Are you still eating your all beef diet? Unfortunately, yes. Really, just just beef. Not. Can you have like ketchup no, on it? No. Nothing. Yes, I wouldn't. It isn't something I would lightly recommend. It's a little hard on your social life.、It、makes traveling quite difficult, and it's dull as hell. But, but. But what's it? What has it done for you? Well, I lost fifty pounds in seven months. I stopped snoring. I had some autoimmune conditions that seem to have gone away. I'm not taking antidepressants. My mood isn't perfectly regulated, but I'm under a fair bit of stress, so that might have something to do with it. I sleep much less.、Um, I can work more. Imagine your arteries might not be in great shape. I don't. I don't. Shape. I don't think there's any evidence that that. I don't think we have any idea what causes arteriosclerosis. I think all of the dietary knowledge we have is is rubbish, and、uh, partly because it's. Unbelievably difficult to do proper dietary studies.、Mm. You can't do controlled studies. Say、eh? it's all correlational, and there's so many variables. I think the correlational studies are useless. Also, the this all meat diet, this all beef diet, has apparently cured my daughter. So, you had juvenile seems, rheumatoid arthritis. Well, that was the original diagnosis. Then it was idiopathic, which means we don't, we know, don't know what, what the hell's causing、yeah. it. Yeah, but she's completely symptom-free. So. And、that sort of thing makes you sit up and take notice because it doesn't make any sense. When、so. was the last time you lied? Because the book says no lying. Do you still lie? Everybody lies, as Doctor House himself told us.、Mm -hmm. What is most important? But I'm pretty damn careful about it. What is most important to you in life? Not being stupid. How would your life? Not making foolish mistakes. Not being incautious. Yeah. That's tough on yourself. You're on this carnivore diet、yes. now. Okay, so I want to preface that with something. I am not a dietary expert, so I'm now、right. speaking as an uninformed citizen. You have done this for how long now? I've been on a pure carnivore diet for about two months and a pretty, a very, very low carb, greens only, modified carnivore diet for about a year. So in the year, and 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 a low carb diet for two years. So from the time that I've known you, I've known you for what two and a half years now, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. When I first met you, you had much more weight on your body. Yeah. You looked different. Yeah. And you were back then. You were eating like the standard diet, right? Like normal yeah, people. Yes. Do. Pasta, bread, meat,、yes. chicken, whatever. Yes. Right. You shifted over to only meat and greens. I saw you, and I'm like, "You look fantastic." I'm like, "What are you doing?"、Mm -hmm. And you're like, "I changed my diet. I only eat meat and greens." And I was like,、yeah. "Wow, that's fascinating." Well, I felt like, "Okay, what you're doing is cutting out refined sugars and all、yeah. these different things that are problematic,、uh, preservatives, all the bullshit processed foods,、mm -hmm. and you're having this extreme health benefit." And I was like, "Wow, that's really excellent. You're showing great discipline." Then. You decided to take it to another place and cut out the greens. Yeah, I know. What was the motivation for cutting out the greens? Well, all of the motivation for this has been my experience with my daughter because she has an unbelievably serious autoimmune disease. I just talked to her this what morning. What is it called? Well, it's it's arthritis. 
but it, there's, there's way more to it than that. But the arthritis was the major set of symptoms. She had 40 affected joints and she had to have her hip replaced and her ankle replaced when she was 15 and 16. And so she basically hobbled around on two broken legs for two years in extreme agony. And that was just a tiny fraction of the, of the whole set of problems. I just talked to her this morning. She's in Chicago. Looks like she has to have her ankle replacement replaced. So that's next on the horizon. But, uh, but apart from that, she is doing so well now. It is absolutely beyond comprehension. So she's, she's, she's very trim. She had a baby, but she's very trim. She's down to about 118 pounds. She's about five foot six. She's just glowing with health. All of her autoimmune system symptoms are gone, all of them. And she was also seriously depressed, like severely depressed, way worse than you think. She couldn't stay awake for more than about six hours without taking Ritalin. Um, and she was dying. And I had a cousin, my cousin's daughter. She died when she was 30 from an associated autoimmune condition. So there's a fair bit of this in our family. It was bloody bleak, I'll tell you. And my wife always had a suspicion that this was dietary related. You know, and Why? I... Well, we did notice that when Michaela was young, if, if she ate oranges or strawberries, that she'd get a rash. Like there were, there, were, there were, and then when she developed arthritis, if she ate oranges in particular, that would definitely cause a flare. It was the only thing we could see. The problem is, is that in order to identify a dietary component, the response has to be pretty quick after you eat the thing. Like if it's two days later, how the hell are you going to figure that out? Right. A lot of these responses appear to be delayed for four days and last a month. So good luck figuring that out. Anyways, Michaela noticed about three years ago, no, more than that now, five years ago, she was at Concordia University and, and struggling with her, with her illness and, and all the association, associated problems. She noticed that around exam time, she was t starting to develop real skin problems. And she thought, oh, it must be stress. And then she thought, wait a second, I really changed my diet when I'm studying. All I do is eat bagels. All I do is eat bread sandwiches. She thought, maybe it's the bread. So she cut out gluten first, and it had a remarkable effect, like a really remarkable effect. And then she, she went on a radical elimination diet all the way down to nothing but chicken and broccoli. And then her symptoms started to drop off one by one. Like, and, and like one of the things that happened is she started to wake up in the morning. She started to be able to stay awake all day. And when you're only staying awake for six hours with Riddle and staying awake all day, that's like having a life. And so a whole bunch of things improved. Then her depression went away. And I've had depression since I was 13, probably, and very severe. And I've treated it a variety of ways, some of them quite successfully. But it's been a constant battle. And my father had it, and his father had it. And it's all just rife in my family. And my wife has autoimmune problems in her. When you say depression, define it. Oh, oh, uh, how would you define it? Because that's, that's a blanket term. Yeah. Well, imagine, imagine that you wake up and that you remember that all your family was killed in a horrible accident yesterday. You would feel that even All if nothing was wrong. Yes, yes. Just, just. It's dread. actually worse than that. Because, really? well, one of the things Michaela told me was she thought, well, what's it like to be depressed? Well, imagine you have a dog and you really love the dog, and then the dog dies. And then about two, three years ago, our dog died, and that was Michaela's dog, and she really liked that dog. And she said, that was bad, but it's nowhere near as bad as being depressed. And I asked her too at one point when she was about 15 or 16. I said, look, you've got a choice, kid. Here's the choice. You can either have depression or arthritis. Which one? I'll take the arthritis. Well, that was after she'd lost two joints. So it was no joke. It's no joke, man. It, there isn't anything. No, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say there's nothing worse. Because worse is a very deep hole. Right. But it's bad. Yeah, people will prove you wrong, right? Oh, yes, definitely. Worse, yeah. worse is a deep hole. Anyways, her depression went away. All these symptoms went away. And like radically. So what changed her from chicken and broccoli to carnivore? Well, she, she, she kept experimenting and she, she got very sensitive to all sorts of foods in the aftermath of that too. So this is why I wouldn't recommend that anybody does this casually because we don't understand much about it. But she started to add things back and take them away. And sometimes when she added things, the results were devastating. She was like done for a month. She ate the wrong thing, done for a month. All the symptoms came back, the depression came back. She thought that her whole dietary theory was wrong because it lasted so long and was so extreme. And it's like it took her two years to figure out that really what she could eat was beef and greens. And then she figured out that she could only eat beef. So and the so, greens themselves. Well, look, so what ha happened? Okay, so two years ago, she said, Dad, you have to try this diet because you have a lot of the same symptoms as me. Now, I didn't have arthritis, but I had a lot of the other symptoms. And I thought, oh, Christ, okay, Michaela. 
I can try anything for a month. She said, try it for a month. I thought, okay, whatever. I can hang by my fingernails from the windowsill for a month. It's like, it's just not that big a deal. And so I, I eliminated, I went on a really low carb diet. Okay, so this is what happened. I had gastric reflux disorder and I was snoring quite a lot. I stopped snoring the first week. I thought, what the hell? That's supposed to be associated with weight loss. Because I had gained some weight. I weighed about 212 pounds and I'm about six, one and a half. So that was my maximum weight. I stopped snoring, which was a great relief to Tammy. So that just quit. And that's a big deal, right? Because if you snore, you have sleep apnea and then you don't sleep right. And it's like not a good thing. Okay, next. I started waking up in the mornings. I'd never been able to wake up in the mornings my whole life. I always had to stumble to the shower and then maybe I could wake up. It took me an hour and I felt terrible. And so all of a sudden I woke up and it was like, oh, look at that. I'm awake in the morning and I'm clear headed and, and things aren't gloomy and horrible. It's like, well, isn't that weird? Then I lost seven pounds the first month. I thought, seven pounds, that's a lot in a month. And I'd already gone for a whole year on a sugar-free diet, and I didn't lose any weight. And I'd been exercising. Sugar-free, you know? but did you cut out bread and No, gluten? no, it was just no desserts, no okay. sugar. No, And I thought that might do it. didn't make any difference at all. Seven pounds. Well, then, then I lost seven pounds the next month. Then I lost seven pounds the next month. I lost seven pounds every month for seven months. It's like I'd throw away all my clothes. I went back to the same weight that I was when I was 26. And my psoriasis disappeared. And I had floaters in my right eye, and they cleared up. And then the last thing that went away for me, I was still having a bitch of a time with mood regulation, and that sucked because when I changed my diet, I didn't respond to antidepressants properly anymore. They weren't working. And so although I was getting better physically on a variety of ways, like radical ways, um, I was really having a bitch of a time regulating my mood, and I was having sporadic, really negative reactions to food when I ate something I shouldn't. So that took about a year and a half to clear up, and I was still really anxious in the morning up to three months ago, like horribly, and then it would get better all day. People said, well, you're under a lot of stress, and I thought, yeah, yeah, I've been under a lot of stress for like 10 years. It's like, it's a lot, but it, it wasn't any more stressful than helping my daughter deal with her illness, that's for sure. That, no, this is something different. And she said to me, um, quit eating greens. And I thought, oh, really? Jesus, Michaela, I'm eating cucumbers, lettuce, broccoli, and chicken and beef. It's like, I have to cut out the goddamn greens? It's like, try it for a month. Okay, within a week, I was 25% less anxious in the morning. Within two weeks, 75%. And I've been better every single day. I'm better now, probably, than I've ever been in my life. And I haven't been taking antidepressants for a whole year. So, I don't know what, and I weigh 162 pounds. Like, I have no, I'm, I'm, and I've actually gained musculature. I've been doing some working out, but not a lot. And so, I can sleep six hours a night, no problem. I wake up in the morning, I'm awake. If I take a 15-minute nap, that used to take me an hour to recover from, that's gone. Here's the coolest thing. I've had gum disease since I was 25. That's been serious enough to have, I've had to have minor surgical interventions, scraping and that sort of thing to keep it at bay. It's gone. I checked with my dentist before this last tour. No inflammation. And that's associated with heart disease, by the way, gum inflammation and gingivitis. It's a good risk factor for heart disease. It means the systemic inflammation is gone. And it's not supposed to happen. You're not supposed to recover from gingivitis. And my gums are in perfect shape. It's like, what the hell? So here's what happened. I lost 50 pounds. It's like, that's a lot, right? I'm nowhere near as hungry as I used to be. My appetite's probably fallen by 70%. I don't get blood sugar dysregulation problems. Um, I need way less sleep. I get up in the morning and I'm fine. I'm not anxious. I'm not depressed. I don't have psoriasis. Um, my legs were numb on the sides. That's gone. I'm certainly intellectually at my best at the moment, which is a great relief, especially doing this tour. Depression is gone. Um, I'm stronger. I can swim better. And my gum disease is gone. It's like, what the hell? No, I eat beef and salt and water. That's it. And I never cheat, ever, not even a little bit. No Nothing. soda, no wine. Uh, I drink club soda. Uh, disclaimer number two, I am not recommending right. this to anyone. And if you haven't yet done so and you feel like doing it, hit the subscribe button 